Hey, hello guys. Good evening to everyone. Welcome to IQ Civil Science Academy, Guwahati. A great course transforms life. So, in this video, we are going to discuss the El Nino and the monsoon. It is second part of the video. The first part of the video is already on YouTube. You can check it out. Uh, this is a two-part series, so it is must for you to watch the part one and part two. This topic will be covered by me, Dr. Sachin Kadam, faculty at IQ Civil Science Academy, Guwahati. So, guys, we are starting our new batches of from. 5th July, 12th July and 19th July. These are the dates to start our uh, batches. Okay, uh, Our new batches will start from 5th July, 12th July and 19th July 2023. These batches are available offline as well as online. Okay, And if you want to book your seat and register your name, you should call on this number our director Anuj Singh or on this number our counsellor Indrani Deka. This is our YouTube channel. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, like this video, share this video and don't forget to spread the word. At IQ Civil Science Academy online as well as offline, uh, faculties are based from the Delhi that includes Sunil sir, Sachin sir, Anuj sir, Alok sir, Yogesh sir, Rizwan sir, uh, Vikram sir and Nitin Kumar sir. This is the Google review given by the students to IQ Civil Science Academy. 4.9 star, it is rare and unique for any civil services institute. So you can be rest assured about the quality of the content available at IQ Civil Science Academy. So we already discussed about what is El Nino. In short, I will quickly give you a recap. El Nino is the uh, abnormal warming of the sea surface waters in eastern tropical equatorial uh, Pacific Ocean. What is La Nina? La Nina is the unusual cooling of the sea surface water temperature or sea surface water in again tropical equatorial eastern Pacific Ocean. And there is one more phase which is known as neutral phase. In this neutral phase, uh, temperatures are neither higher nor lower. So all these three are known as El Nino Southern Oscillation, ENSO. And we call this ENSO Ocean atmosphere system. Why? Because in El Nino, La Nina or neutral phase, the temperature of the ocean is either more or lesser or normal. At the same time, the pressure of the air on the surface of the sea either increases or decreases or remains normal. So these two together are known as El Nino Southern Oscillation. Then we discussed about the uh, duration of the El Nino, El Nino is normally 9 months to 12 months, the duration of the El Nino and the duration of La Nina is normally 1 year to 3 year. Okay, this is second point that we discussed about El Nino and La Nina. Uh, then the frequency of El Nino is lesser, like it occurs more frequent, sorry, El Nino is more frequent, duration is less but frequency is more. So, El Nino is more frequent and La Nina is less frequent. Okay. La Nina is less frequent. So, this is the second point you should remember for your uh, preliminary examination. We call La Nina cooling, cool phase. We call El Nino warming phase or warm phase. Okay. Then, when this El Nino we came to know, so already the people from Peru and Equator, they knew about El Nino, but in 1920s, scientists officially declared that they know the phenomenon called uh, El Nino. And about La Nina, we came to know about La Nina in 1980. El Nino is a Spanish word which means the little boy and La Nina is uh, little crisp. Okay. So, El Nino event is not a regular cycle, it is not predictable, it occurs irregularly. 2 to 7 years intervals okay and El Nino is linked to the southern oscillation now what is southern oscillation it is a change in air pressure over the tropical pacific ocean or you can say it is the difference in the air pressure over western tropical pacific ocean and eastern tropical pacific ocean okay let's go ahead so this is all about El Nino and ENSO then El Nino and La Nina to monitor them we use scientific BIOS. These are the instruments that float in the middle of the ocean which are used as a locator or as warning points by the ships as well as they are used by the scientists to collect the data related to the temperature of the ocean and the pressure in the air or humidity. All these things are in the middle of the ocean. These are the BIOS. 
okay so what these bios do they measure ocean and air temperatures they measure currents winds and humidity all these things are measured by them then what is oceanic nino index so this index measures the deviation from normal sea temperature whether temperature is going up or whether temperature is going down if it is going up we call that al nino if it is going down we call that la nina so this is done with the help of one index that is known as oceanic nino index now here they told us that al nino can be weak if the rise in temperature is not much it can be mid medium if rise in temperature is more and if it can be strong if rise in temperature is very high this strong al nino was observed in 2016 so this is oceanic nino index now what is the impact of al nino that is the topic of today's session okay so in order to understand the concept of al nino it's important to be familiar with non al nino conditions in the pacific ocean if you want to understand want to know what exactly an al nino can cause or what impact al nino can cause for that you need to understand what exactly happens when there is no al nino and why we are discussing about al nino la nina al nino or la nina al nino la nina so why we are discussing this al nino and la nina this much this reason you will understand here because it has impact okay normally strong trade winds blow westward across the tropical pacific ocean okay across the tropical pacific ocean now what is trade wind these are the permanent winds present between tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn i already told you and they flow they blow from east to the west okay so normally strong trade winds blow westward across the tropical pacific the region of the pacific ocean located between the tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn this is the normally what happens when there is no al nino so winds blow from east to west winds blow from east to west winds blow from east to west these are trade winds that's why sometime we call monsoon trade winds because they are part of the trade winds okay so uh, this uh, this is what happens in the normal years when there is no al nino okay just a minute huh? yes let's go ahead then impact on ocean al nino also impacts ocean temperatures obviously the first impact is on ocean temperature the average temperature of the ocean increases then it also impact the speed and strength of a ocean current so number 1 it impacts the ocean temperature number 2 it uh, impacts the speed and strength of ocean currents number 3 it also impact the health of coastal fish fisheries obviously if there is any change in the temperature of the ocean if there is any change in the um uh, ocean direction in the ocean current if there is a change in the speed of the ocean current strength of the ocean current or direction of the ocean current so it is going to have impact on the it is going to have impact on the health of the coastal fisheries as well as it impacts the local weather from australia to south america why because what is which is the play playground of al nino and la nina or enso the playground of al nino la nina and enso is the the ocean between the equator and peru and the philippines and indonesia this part of the ocean is the playground of al nino and la nina so that's why it has the impact on the local weather of australia local weather of guyana weather of indonesia local weather of south america particularly okay so uh, this is about the impact fine uh then it also has impact beyond this region number 1 al nino increased rainfall now see when it comes to india al nino reduces the rainfall in india but it also increases the rainfall but where in southern america okay so increased rainfall convection above warmer surface waters brings increased precipitation in south america 
so el nino reduces the precipitation in australia indonesia philippines and india and it increases the rainfall or precipitation in south america rainfall increases drastically in south america contributing to coastal flooding and erosion then so here you can see if there is el nino less rainfall more rainfall here you will experience less rainfall here you will experience less rainfall and here you will experience more rainfall okay this is one point then if there is increase in rainfall it will cause diseases okay if there is increase in rainfall it will cause diseases if there is decrease in rainfall it will also cause diseases okay so diseases can be caused because of the floods or they can be caused because of the droughts so diseases caused by floods and droughts diseases thrive in communities devastated by natural hazards such as flood or drought el nino related flooding is associated with increase in cholera dengue and malaria in some parts of the world because these diseases spread when there is a poor water condition why drought can lead to wild fires that create respiratory problems so first impact el nino increases rainfall in south america decreases rainfall in australia indonesia philippines and india second el nino causes diseases in uh, south america as well as philippine indonesia australia and india either by increasing the rainfall or by decreasing the rainfall now what is the positive impact of el nino it can sometime have a positive impact too for example this is very important for your prelims huh? El Nino reduces the instances of hurricanes in Atlantic Ocean. If there is El Nino, so number of cyclones or number of uh, hurricanes in Atlantic Ocean in this part they reduce. So it is a positive impact because hurricane or cyclone they can destroy many cities, they can destroy agriculture, they can kill people. So this is the positive impact of the El Nino. and in south america as el nino brings rain to south america it brings droughts to indonesia and australia i told you already these droughts threaten the region's water supplies as the reservoirs dry and rivers carry less water agriculture which depends on water for irrigation is also threatened because there is less water in indonesia australia and india so this is the impact of el nino uh some impacts of el nino now we will go to the another topic or other impacts of el nino okay in western pacific what does this el nino does in western pacific these winds push warm surface water towards the western pacific where it borders asia and australia so el nino pushes warm water towards in this direction okay warm ocean water will travel in western pacific then due to the warm trade winds the sea surface is normally about 0.5 meter higher and 4.5 degree fahrenheit warmer in indonesia than equator so because of this the temperature of the air as well as temperature of the ocean because of el nino temperature of air and temperature of the ocean in western pacific that is indonesia and australia increases this is a warming period right the westward movement of warmer water causes cooler waters to rise up towards the surface on the coast of equator peru and chile chile so as warm water is going from here to here so there is a space available for deep water to come up so this deep water is cooler so cool water will come about warm water will move from america to asia and cool water present at the bottom of the ocean will come up we call this upwelling and because of the upwelling nutrients that are present at the base or at the floor of the ocean they come up and because of the upwelling and because of the increased percentage of nutrients on the surface of the ocean in eastern pacific of the coast of equator and peru population of fish increases and increased population of fish helps fishermen in peru and equator so el nino is a good thing for the fishermen in peru and equator but it is a bad thing for the people in australia indonesia philippines and india or southeast asia okay upwelling 
elevates cold nutrient rich water to the euphotic zone that is the upper layer of the ocean which helps in fisheries okay this is the upwelling from bottom water will come up okay so till date how many there are many el nino events are till date but the most important el nino events of the 20th century are el nino events of 1982 to 83 and 1997 to 98 were the most intense of the 20th century during the 1982 to 83 event sea surface temperature in the eastern tropical pacific that is off the coast of equator and peru were 9 to 18 degree fahrenheit above normal the el nino event of 1997 to 98 was the first el nino event to scientifically monitored from beginning to end and now we know the complete history of the el nino okay the 97 98 event produced drought conditions in indonesia in malaysia in philippines while peru and california experienced heavy rains and severe flooding in short simple concept hai in this case if there is el nino more rain to north and south america and less rain to australia and the indonesia it is that simple okay now la nina what is the meaning of la nina as i told you el nino means el nino is a spanish word el nino means little boy okay and la nina means the little girl so la nina means the little girl in spanish spanish it is also sometimes called el vije viejo anti el nino or simply a cold event la nina events represent periods of below average sea surface temperature across the east central equatorial pacific it is indicated by sea surface temperature decreased by more than 0.9 degree fahrenheit la nina event is observed when the water temperature in the eastern pacific gets comparatively colder than normal as a consequence of which there is a strong high pressure over the eastern equatorial pacific region so this is all about la nina and el nino okay in case of la nina strong trade winds will go in this direction so there will be more rainfall here and less rainfall here in el nino opposite will happen in let's see in el nino here winds will blow like this so more rainfall in this uh, region in la nina here winds will blow like this so more rainfall in this year okay so the conditions of la nina cooler than normal waters in tropical ocean lower than normal air pressure over the western pacific and rainier than normal conditions over southeastern africa and northern brazil okay so this is all about la nina and el nino now what are the impact of la nina and el nino on other parts of the world that we will discuss in the next part of this video that is part 3 of this video now i told you the uh, impact of el nino in detail and i also told you about the previous el nino events right now about the la nina and the conditions of la nina then impact of la nina and the la nina in 2010 or the enso and its impact on india all these things we will discuss in the next session so our iq civil science academy guwahati is also helping a government through different government projects to help different uh, meritorious students to crack upsc or apsc examination uh, we are starting our new batches as i told you already from 5th july from 12th july and from the uh, 19th july so new will new batches will be starting from 5th july from 12th july and from 19th july if you want to join these batches of 5th 12th and 19th which are online as well as offline what you need to do you need to register yourself once you register yourself uh, your seat will be booked and to book your seat you need to call on these numbers either to our counselor or to our director mr anil singh sir the notes of this el nino and la nina will be available on this telegram channel to join so join this telegram channel and ensure that you like this video share this video and subscribe to our youtube channel so that's it from my side for the day guys the third part of this series will be out soon so stay tuned thank you very much bye bye